Hi again. The goal and scope stage is about defining which question the LCA will answer and the extent of the product system. Let's start with the usual questions that LCAs are used for. Firstly, LCA can compare product alternatives. So, for example, if you want to know whether it is better for the environment to use a disposable plastic coffee cup or a disposable paper cup or a porcelain cup, then LCA will allow you to compare these products in terms of their environmental performance. Secondly, LCA can also allow you to focus on one single product, for example, the disposable plastic coffee cup, and identify which parts of the product's life cycle causes the most damage. Remember that LCA tracks the impact of a product throughout its life, starting from mining or extracting the raw materials to make the product. In the case of a plastic, cof uh, plastic coffee cup, it begins with the extraction of fossil fuels, or if it is bioplastic, the harvesting of biomass. This is followed by the production, the distribution, and the actual use of the cup, which is called the use phase. Finally, LCA considers the cup's eventual disposal. Don't do that at home. No, really. LCA allows us to identify the so-called hotspots in the product life cycle of, a product, of the product. In other words, it shows us whether, where in the life of the product the product is causing the most damage to the environment. In this example, LCA would allow us to see what part of the disposable plastic cup is the worst for the environment. From there, the product designers can try to improve on those hotspots. So, as an LCA practitioner, we can approach our problem by first asking ourselves, are we comparing alternatives or are we trying to identify hotspots in a product? The next thing we do is to understand our system boundary. Remember that LCA quantifies the environmental exchanges caused by a product or service being evaluated. Our system boundary is the extent to which we consider these exchanges. It is not possible to consider all the possible environmental exchanges by a product, but it is possible to identify what will be the largest exchanges. When it comes to exchanges that we know will be very small or have a very limited influence on our results, we can consider excluding them. The point at which we decide to limit our scope of consideration can be referred to as our system boundary. We need to be able to justify our system boundary decisions. It is possible that we realize the significance of our system boundary decisions at the interpretation stage of the LCA. If this is the case, then our system boundary should be either expanded or contracted. We can make the adjustment and reiterate the assessment. So now you have a better idea of what the goal and scope definition of LCA entails. Do you have any questions an LCA could answer? See you next time.